Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News in Shinrin Yoku. And we're here with a volcano and seismic update. Monday, November 30th, 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2020. You're looking at the eruption of Semeru in 1985. At only VEI 2, this eruption, well, it was spectacular. And what we just witnessed hours ago is a high-level eruption, the second in six months from Semeru, eclipsing the last eruption by 4,000 feet. This one penetrating to 50,000 feet into potentially the stratosphere. Let's break it down. Back in May 16th, Semeru erupted to 46,000 feet, the first confirmed VEI-3 since records began being kept. And here is that data set, confirmed VEI-3 2020. And you can see here from the list of observational, historic observations, this volcano has only been erupting continuously since 1818 at VEI-2. So something has changed drastically. We have a VEI-3 eruption in May at 46,000 feet, followed by a small 14,000-foot discrete eruption in early September, and then another 14,000-foot eruption in late October, and then boom! The highest level eruption in recorded history at Semeru to 50,000 feet, VEI-3 minimum confirmed based on historical documents. Now, not a lot of visuals are coming out from this volcano currently. That's just because we're on top of it way before anyone else. But that doesn't mean that should give you pause. That should allow you to realize that the, well, the earth itself is going to be cooling because of all of the ejecta. Now, another phenomenon I want to talk about happening at the same time. First of all, this eruption at Semeru occurred. Let's go to the data set here. It's confirmed on Himawari 8. I looked at the data. It, uh, I just couldn't get up a good video for you to see it. Definitely penetrating what appears to be into the stratosphere, a small streamer, maybe 100 miles long. So that's going to stay up there for quite some time, several years. Cooling the planet ever so slightly. And the color code also was red, which kept all flight travel away. It was a high-level eruption to 50,000 feet, and it was observed on satellite and by humans. That's 15,200 meters. That's a lot. Now, where was I? So this stratospheric injection will cool the Earth slightly, maybe a tenth of a degree. But Semeru is only getting started. In the last six months, we've had two VEI-3s from the same volcano increasing in altitude. So there's that. And the eruption occurred. Oh, that's what I was getting to. Let's go back to the data. The eruption occurred at 1957 UTC on the 30th. Moments later, two simultaneous volc uh, earthquakes, a 6.4 in Russia at 2254 and a 6.4 in Peru, or 6.3 downgraded, at the same exact time, separated by seconds, two 6.4 magnitudes on the opposite side of the ring of fire at the same moment, two hours after Indonesia exploded. Do you see the triangle there? So things are lighting up on the ring of fire. Now, Semeru, I'll show you exactly where that is down here on the map so that we can bring you up the speed, is just west of Bali on the island of Java. And we have no bandwidth because this is just not loading. Let's bring it in and see what we can do. We'll just give that a minute. Now, I'll bring your attention over here to the telemetry. And this is Discover Solar Wind. And what we have is a volcanic eruption at 1950 UTC right here at the beginning of this disassemble uh, array here, this radical telemetry response. The volcanic eruption happens at 1954 UTC, which is right at the beginning of this outbreak, right here at the beginning of the purple. 
plasma speed increases erratically, boom, the volcano goes off. Two and a half hours later, in this dark region right here, two 6.4 magnitude earthquakes occur. Now, up on the phi angle, really nothing going on. And on the uh, BZ as well, very little going on. So everything is happening here in the temperature, speed, and density of the plasma. When that first plasma stream hits here, the volcano in Java goes off, Semaru. Two and a half hours later, on this green strip right here, and this yellow strip, two simultaneous 6.4 earthquakes in the Ring of Fire. Now, here we are in Indonesia. This little island here is Bali. This is Java. And Semaru is right here at the pinch point on the island, right here where I'm pointing. Bali is here, Java is here, and that is where the position of Semaru is. And this baby blew hard. Not a lot of video I can find, in fact, none, and not a lot of information. But according to Darwin Vock, the volcanic ash plume rose to 50,000 feet, confirmed by Himawari, which I checked, and it did occur <laughs> at the altitude of 50,000 feet and is moving 25 knots to the southwest which is exactly where I saw that 100-mile dark plume up in the stratosphere. And that happened at 20, uh, t that happened at 2230 UTC if you want to go check out Himawari 8 data yourself. I just don't have the bandwidth to show it to you. But we may show it to you in the morning as more details emerge. Semaru erupting to the highest level since records recorded. The second VEI-3 in six months coming from this volcano and we need to keep a close eye on Semeru. As, this, as the sun wakes up. Now, Semeru isn't the only volcano to be erupting in the last few days. Talika volcano just woke up, puffing to 5,000 feet here. You can see that streamer here. And earlier in today's update, we talked about Kluchiskov into the Kamchatka and the uptick that that's experiencing, actually blasting to 25,000 feet moments ago. And the aviation color code r r raised to orange there up in uh, the Kamchatka. And look at how dark that volcano is. This baby is also a little unsettled. Not as quite as pissed as Semeru erupting twice as high, 50,000 feet, probably stratospheric. Also associated with two simultaneous 6.4 magnitude quakes on the opposite sides of the ring of fire. Semaru down here, booming, and then two and a half hours later, boom, boom, quake, quake. We're going to have to keep a close eye on this, folks, as well as Kluchiskov as we move forward. Volcanoes, they be exploding. Are you prepared? Are you prepared for any eventuality? Blizzards coming up. It's not even winter. We have record snow. Volcanoes, wildfires. Prepare with the ranch.com. Prepare with the ranch.com for your preparedness needs and your long term food storage. This brings you directly to My Patriot Supply, where they have an amazing long term food storage special happening right now for the holiday season. Go to prepare with the ranch.com. Support the channel, support your family in the eventuality of a catastrophe, which is coming. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. As we experience one of the largest upticks in volcanic activity in a while, albeit non-catastrophic, these are very remote regions. So you really don't have to worry about these, especially if you're in the US. What it could affect is the long-term weather patterns throughout the winter, more extreme cold and snow for the Southern hemisphere. This is more a warning to the masses that three and a half, four years ago, we predicted this would happen now, and it has begun. It will begin on the uptick of solar cycle 25, and it will culminate in a grid down scenario when a massive solar flare comes off the sun. Will you be prepared for a grid down scenario? Do you have backup energy, backup water, backup food supplies to last three months? One year, maybe three years in some areas. The most important 
tip I can tell you is to start preparing now. Even if you have no money, a dollar or two will get you a bag of dried beans and rice, some candles. That's way more than the people had back in the olden days. They knew how to do it from scratch. and Most people don't know how to do anything. So if you're late to the game, you can always start now. Prepare now. Preparewiththeranch.com. And be safe. We love you. And that, well, that's a boom. Be safe. Nanu,